Welcome back to the Lumios Post, where we talk about all things Pokemon, and today, well today, we, we've got to talk about something very interesting. So you see, in the beginning of this DLC, we got to see Kieran lose his freaking mind. You know, this kid, he goes from, oh, I've never had a friend before, to, oh, I, I want to kill everyone, you know? A kid became a total jerk, and a lot of people speculated that this could be because he was being influenced by the master of the loyal three the pokemon that pretty much created them with the toxic chain we have now met this pokemon it is petrant and uh well the game seems to imply that's not the case or does it ironically when you play through the epilogue you will actually find out that every character in mossway town gets possessed by petrant except for Kieran and you. So, you know, that's that's just kind of funny. I wanted to point that out. But yeah, so, you know, it, it also, at no point does it say, oh, Kieran was under the influence of this thing too, you know? At no point does it say that. So it really seems like Game Freak is wanting us to, you know, not think that. But I will say I, I never did think that. I never thought that Kieran was possessed by this thing. However, I did think, and I still do think, that Kieran was being influenced by this Pokemon. There's a difference between influence and possession, right? Possession is what we're seeing in the epilogue, you know, where the eyes are glazed over purple, you're seeing that aura around them, and they're, you know, not acting like themselves. They're doing the chicken dance for some reason, and they are just saying mochi over and over and over again. You know, influence is like... It, you know, if, it, like, to use it how, you know, you kind of hear it growing up, bad influences, right? If you're hanging around kids in school who are like, hey, you know, you should have a smoke. You're the one who decides if you smoke that cigarette or not. But that person did influence you, right? It's like the little devil on your shoulder. It's not possession, influence. Just want to establish that difference there because that's very important for us to understand this. So Kieran was very clearly not possessed. Uh, at no point did he say mochi uh, during the second part, the indigo disc. And also he doesn't have the purple glaze over of the eyes and he never really did the chicken dance either. So definitely not possession. But I wanna talk about this scene, this scene right here. In this scene, this is in the teal mask when Kieran is really upset with you. Uh, you've just defeated him in battle. And so he punches the shrine to the loyal three. When he does this, if you freeze frame it, you can see that there's this little purple aura under his fist. And if you slow it down a lot, you can see the purple aura moves from the shrine up Kieran. Now look guys, this isn't some kind of bug, you know, that doesn't just happen, there's no glitch where every single game is seeing a little purple aura go from the shrine to Kieran. And then, by the way, right after this is when the Loyal Three come back to life. So, there's clearly something at play, and the fact that Game Freak took the time to animate so subtly that it's to the point where you have to freeze frame it to see it, a little aura of purple kind of move into Kieran makes me think that this was indeed intentional. So again, at no point am I saying that he is possessed, but I do think he's being influenced by this Pokemon. And in fact, we actually know someone else who has been influenced by Petrarot. In fact, we know three Pokemon that have been influenced by Petrarot, not possessed. That's Okie Dogie, Pheasantipity, and Monkey Dory, or the Loyal Three as they are known. So these Pokemon were once completely different Pokemon, or at least looked very different. They uh, were, Okie Dogie was weak, Pheasantipity was very ugly, and Monkey Dory was very foolish. And these Pokemon wished for strength, wisdom, and beauty respectively, and Petrarant basically was able to grant them that through the toxic chain. Pheasantipity became more beautiful, Okie Dogie became stronger, and Monkey Dory became really smart, you know, even getting like psychic powers because his brain power is so huge with that Jimmy Neutron looking head of his. But yeah, all these Pokemon were not possessed by Petrarant either. You don't see a glaze over Okie Dogie's eyes. You don't see the purple aura around them. You don't see them talking about Mochi and doing the chicken dance. These Pokemon were given this power by Petrarant. And I think the same thing happened to Kieran. And likewise, 
it also seemed to kind of affect these Pokemon's judgments, right? Like, they were jerks. They were really mean to Ogre Pond. And they were just kind of horrible Pokemon all around. Not good people. Not at all. Uh, Kieran, same thing. He was a good kid. But ever since this incident at the shrine, he becomes so angry and so just focused on revenge. You know, he goes to Blueberry Academy and tries to make Drayton's life as horrible as possible and tries to ruin the club and just, you know, you can tell that something changed here. And real quick, I also do want to go back and say that aura that moves up Kieran's sleeve kind of does look very similar to the aura we see around the possessed people. Again, don't think that Kieran's possessed, but just saying that I do think it's all roped back to Petrant. So yeah, what I'm proposing is that Petrant, like he did with the Loyal Three, gave Kieran strength. He gave Kieran the mindset to get stronger, the willpower to get stronger, and maybe even actually the strength to get stronger. You know, he, he erased that fear and anxiety that Kieran had. But unfortunately, again, like with the Loyal Three, perhaps replaced it with a lack of judgment and kind of a sour character. Now, you may go, okay, but with the Loyal Three, there was this drastic change. There wasn't with Kieran. And that's actually really easily explained. The Loyal Three are Pokemon. Kieran is not. Pokemon are capable of evolution. Humans are not. So, of course, Kieran isn't going to get this drastic change where he's now looking like, I don't know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And, you know, it's not going to be like that. It's, it's just going to be a change in personality for a human because they can't evolve. Which would also kind of confirm that the Loyal Three, what they experienced was an evolution, which actually does make a lot of sense, right? It's just a special kind of evolution, you know? Think it's no different from me giving a Gloom a Leaf Stone and it evolving into a Vile Plume. Instead, I'm giving a... Uh, some random weak dog Pokemon. We don't know what. Could be like a Poochiana or something, or it could be a Pokemon we don't know of entirely. But I give that Pokemon a Toxic Chain, and it changes into... Okie dokie, you know, uh, this is seemingly a form of evolution that does make a lot of sense. There's the stat boost. It doesn't seem to be a form change because we can't change it back. Everything about these Pokemon does hand at evolutions, which again would explain why Kieran does not change at all. Because again, humans are not capable of evolution. So we know the how. We know that, okay, going by this, Kieran was influenced by Petrant in the same way Okie dokie, Pheasantipity, and Monkey Dory were but not possessed by Petrant like Nimona, Penny, Arvin, and, well, the entire town of Maswi was. But the question is, why? Why wouldn't Petrant possess Kieran? Why wouldn't Petrant possess the Loyal Three? Well, I, I think that all boils down to Petrant not actually being a horrible Pokemon, you know? I, I definitely think it's not the best Pokemon, but I think Petrant was sympathizing with these Pokemon, with the Loyal Three, and with Kieran. So first off, let's just get the facts out of the way. Petrant is a small little guy, right? And he also seems to be cowardly. He shows very cowardly behavior. He uh, seems to kind of shell up a lot. He seems to always be hiding behind someone, never wanting to kind of get his own hands dirty. You know, like sending the Loyal Three after Ogre Pond, or... Uh, hiding behind Arvin and Penny and later Nimona during the story of Mochi Mayhem, he shows to be a cowardly little guy. He's small, he's cowardly. There's a decent chance that he sympathizes with Pokemon or people that he sees like that. So you flash back a long time ago, he comes across these three Pokemon. One is really weak and just wants to be strong and he sympathizes with that. I I want to be taken seriously, but I'm a small little guy. He sees a Pokemon that's like, I want to be beautiful, but I'm so ugly. He sympathizes with that, that desire to be something that you just can't be. But he can allow others to be that. So he, using the Toxic Chain, grants this Pokemon strength, grants this Pokemon beauty, grants this Pokemon wisdom. And then later, same thing with Kieran. Kieran, not only does he want to be strong, he wants to be a powerful trainer, but also you have to think there's some stuff outside of Pokemon battles that Kieran's wanting. Kieran is jealous of Carmine's relationship with the player character, how they're seeming to be hitting it off so quickly and have this little secret together. And ultimately what that shows is Kieran is actually just jealous of his sister's 
ability to just make friends easily. You know, Kieran's shy, Kieran has some social anxiety, and Kieran has a lot of self-doubt about himself. And he's so envious that Carmine doesn't have that. Carmine is confident, Carmine is, uh, well, not level-headed, but able to, you know, make friends, able to talk to people, and he doesn't have that, but he, he wants that. But he can't help that he has that social anxiety. Petrarch sees that and sympathizes with that. And so it grants him strength. It grants him the, hey, you don't need them. You are strong now. People will look up to you. You don't need to go to people anymore. People will go to you looking for help. And that's exactly what happens. Like the first scene of him over in the Blueberry Academy is some guy walking up and being like, hey, you know, help me train. And, you know, of course, Kieran's a jerk and is like, oh, you clearly aren't taking this seriously. I'll put in your resignation for you. So you see what I mean? He he changes that about himself, and that is thanks to Petrarch, you know. It is, again, a little bit for the worst, but ultimately I think what Petrarch was trying to do with these characters was a good thing, you know. I, I think he was trying to help these Pokemon, and, well, Kieran as well. So the question is, okay, well, if that's the case, if... if Petrarch is a nice little guy, then what the heck was he doing possessing everyone in Masui Town? And to be frank with you, I think that that is, uh, I think that he's just honestly throwing a temper tantrum. Again, this Pokemon is small, this Pokemon is cowardly. There's a lot of signs that this Pokemon is, in personality, probably pretty similar to a baby. Now, we know it's not a baby because it's been a long, around a long time. It was, you know, there back when Ogre Pond's friend died and, you know, it stole the masks from Ogre Pond uh, via the Loyal Three. So this Pokemon's been around a long time, but it could be kind of like, I think about Jirachi from the anime. Jirachi is like a billion years old and it just slumbers for a really long time, but it acted very much like a baby. It, it seemed very childlike. I think Petrarch is the same way. And ultimately what happened is Petrarch saw that, you know, oh, my friends are, you know, good guys now. They're with that trainer. Oh, what? And that kid that I helped out, he's relinquished control. He's relinquished his title of champion and doesn't care so much about being the strongest, has even left that club and is nice now. And he was able to catch Terrapagos, who was essentially a god. And ultimately, when it broke out, was like, ah, you can get it now instead of getting himself. That's not the Kieran I created. And so he he let loose a little temper tantrum and you put an end to it. So just wanted to get this video out there and say that, yeah, no, I'm still on the train of Kieran was being influenced by this Pokemon. Not full possession, but influenced. This scene was put in intentionally. Uh, but yeah, and I wanted to explain why that is, why uh, Petrarch would possess some, but just kind of lend strength and power and influence to other Pokemon and people. I wanted to get into that because honestly, this, this little guy's pretty interesting and his mind is... Well, like that of a child's, and I think that's kind of fun. Be sure to let me know what you think of this theory. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And let me know, are you enjoying Mochi Mayhem? Did you enjoy it? Was that fun? I thought it was really fun. I thought it was really nice. You know, it was only like an hour long that I played it, because, you know, that's how quick it was. But for, you know, uh, what it is, I love it. And I love that they're giving mythical Pokemon stories again, instead of just like, hey, here's a Volcanian, don't even ask about it, you know? That's beautiful to me. But yeah, let me know all that in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And until next time, I will see all of you later.